Welcome to Social We Media, straight talk about social multimedia. And I'm really excited today because today I have Randy Bowden from Bowden. Well, actually, I'm going to let him say that because it's two Bowdens. And he runs this agency with his wife. So I am really excited, though, because today we're going to be talking about one of my specialty conversations, which is marketing. So actually, you, sh you run this with your wife, correct? That's correct. And, and, and what is and your lovely wife's name? My, my lovely wife's name is Shayla. And we I knew I wasn't going to say that correctly. So yeah, I was going to say we, Sharon, we, but I know it's not Sharon. And I knew I wasn't going to say that correct, so I was going to let you say that. <laughs> yeah, we, we pronounce, we're, we're Southern, so we pronounce it Bowden. It's there Bowden you go. See? Yeah, so. I knew I wasn't going to say that correctly, so I wasn't going to go there. Right. <laughs> so commonly, and it's Bowden to it. Bowden, right? Bowden right. to Bowden. Yes. So, and you know, we've been in several social media groups together, and you, have, I, you and I have butt heads a couple of times about social media because obviously some people don't think social media equates to marketing. And there really are differences between social media and marketing. So I would love for you to share what your thoughts are and the actual main differences from your point of view, what social media is and what marketing is. So can you start with that? Sure, Carly, and, I, and let me just say thanks. And also, for, can you raise your volume and your voice up a little bit? Because it's a little soft, and I really want people able to hear you. Yeah. How about now? Better? A little higher. A little higher. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's still a little low. Let's see. I really want people to hear your message, because I love, A, you have a beautiful voice. I love, I love accents. Yeah. I really want uh, people to be able to hear you, because this is going to podcast as well. Sure. Is that, is that better? It is. Okay. Um, well, first of all, like I said, I wanted to say thank you for having me. I appreciate very much, and I look forward to, to the conversation tonight. Um, I, I don't. I, I, I think you're right. You and I have had some exchanges in the past, and I've had plenty of exchanges with, with many people. But I, I don't view I don't view uh, social media as marketing. I view it as a channel for marketing, just like. Uh, somebody might use television, somebody might use print. It's just another opportunity to get the message out. It is not necessarily marketing in, a, in its whole, although there's different aspects that you can use in the social media space to, to apply that to a marketing uh, mix, but marketing is marketing. Uh, then you have all the components that you put together, social being one, social being one of them that's very important today because I mean, that's the hot item. Uh, not necessarily that, and, and I think some of my angst comes from the folks that tend to rush into a client or a customer and say, hey, you've got to be on social media, you got to do this and you got to do this before they've ever backed up and even ask, you know, what their strategy is, what their plan is, what their overall mix is and, and what they're doing. Uh, because some, some social platforms might not fit all businesses the same way. So um, it, it's a valuable uh, component. It's just not the, um, the end to everybody's marketing dilemma that we all have played in forever. Uh, so it's, it's, an exciting, it's an exciting platform. I love to, to dabble in, in social. Uh, it, is, it is the conversation of every day. So, uh, and finding, finding new and wet, better ways to use a social, social channel to integrate it into an overall marketing plan that you develop, be it you know where it where it might run with a uh, just say a um, a brand, say A and E Television might run a social campaign that interacts with a television show that they have going. Those type of things where you where you're pulling and you're utilizing that second screen to market to. That's that's the the benefit of social today. So actually, let's back up a little further. So for some people, they might not even know what marketing it is. So can you actually give a definition of what marketing is? Because you, would, you would not be surprised, actually. Some people don't even know what marketing is. So, you know, a lot of people know what social media is. Social, people actually can connotate that social marketing, I mean, so, sorry, that social media is Twitter, it's Google, it's Facebook. To you, what would be the definition of marketing? Well, Twitter, Facebook, and 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 things like that or like I said they're tactics they're tools channels to use to get a message out uh, a lot of people equate marketing 
the first thing that comes to mind in, in, in most people's mind about marketing is, oh, they're just salespeople. That's just the sales or that's just the advertising. Uh, and that's not true. I mean, there is a, there is a differentiation between advertising and marketing, sales. They work together. Think of, think of uh, sales as casting a big net out into the water and catching a bunch of fish because you're just broadcasting a, a, a message out there. Marketing is coming back and finding out, okay, where is the big shark that I want to get in that big cast? So you're identifying where your niche markets is. Marketing is more of a science in studying the demographics, studying the, the company, the culture, and the, the target market that you're going to, and formulating a plan to reach that market. So basically what you're saying is marketing is more creating the blueprint or the plan as to what you're going to do to reach Ab your market. Absolutely. But, it, but, but, but what people have to understand about that is it's not just, well, I've got widget A and I'm going to put, a, put an ad in a magazine and sell it. I mean, it is, okay, it's the story of the company. How did you come up with widget? How do you build that? How do you build that? culture to commute today, especially build that culture to communicate that product so it develops an affinity in the consumer or the potential client's mind. Because what you want is when they see your product, you want them to feel akin to you. So that is marketing, building that. So then when you, when you understand that, you use that plan, that blueprint to develop your ad materials, develop your sales materials and go forth and prosper. So what are, with your company, what would you say is your specialty? What are you known for? Uh, I, I, well, I'm known for a lot of things, but I'd like to, I'd like to say that I'm known for creativity. I, I, like to, I, I like to understand a business and walk in and find out you know, what, they're do, what they're about, what, they're, what their current culture is about, what they think their current culture is about. Uh, understand that uh, you know a lot of times a consultant or a marketing person or outside firm comes in and the person says hey I've got this product please please help me sell it and you know it's not that easy because you do have to step back and you have to identify that uh, I think a lot of people come to market they don't re they have never really even identified who their target market is they don't know their customer so you have to identify that and then take that and build on it. So I think my idea is to come by, or, or my, my skill set would be to come into a, a business, learn their culture, learn their people, develop a part of a, a, a plan that will take their product or their service out in this space and be successful with it. Now, from my personal perspective, I have found LinkedIn to be a better model for business to business. Would you say that you find that to be so? Uh, yes, I would. I would probably agree with you. I, but I, I tend to think of LinkedIn as a it's it's an extremely powerful platform. But I place it more on the professional networking scope in that it is more of a a vita to what your what you've done in your background. Now it has morphed over the last year or so more into just. Generate and, and they're getting some 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 real good buzz because of their news feeds because they, what people what these channels want to do is they want to capture and keep you there and they they've done well that but I personally treat LinkedIn as my personal active living resume of what I do I don't really populate it with with anything other than me and my content now on my other channels I might cross share and curate other people's stuff and share it that way. But on my LinkedIn, it is it is me, my company, or my wife. That's that's how I treat that channel. I do it that way. That way, if some business to business is trying to do business, when they can come to that thing and they're going to see, they're going to see Bowden to Bowden in that in that feed. No, I actually like. No, I like what you said there. I agree with you. I think LinkedIn is more of like you said. It's a living, breathing resume. I like that. I really do. And I, what do you see happening with Google? I really like the Google Hangouts. I find Google, it's not like Facebook. I think Facebook is more a daily, what's going on with your life, what's going on. It, it's just a very different energy. I think it's more family oriented or what's going on with your life. And Google, I don't find it as, as engaging as like a one-on-one. -on -one. What is your experience with Google? 
Um, my experience with Google is is my affinity with Google is growing every day. I like it. I, <laughs> I do. I, 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 but but I have to step back and say that Facebook was was you know if you got to think about what was Facebook built for? Facebook was built to for Carly and I to say, hey, how you doing? Look at these pictures of me at the beach. Hey, did you see those people drunk the other night at the whatever? You know that's what it was built for. It has morphed into this mechanism of just huge gobble up everything and everybody's there and you can't argue with that. But there again, the mass people on Facebook are still saying, hey, look at me at the beach. And, and then you get all this mingled, jarble stuff in there. Um, Twitter, Twitter probably, if you asked me, said, hey, if you've got to do away with everything and only keep one, I would keep Twitter because it's a live, living, breathing news feed to me. I like that. It is quick I like message. Twitter. You and I can talk. Google takes probably where you were talking from in an exchange, and you can use Google Plus as a almost as a personal blog. You can, you can write long posts on there. You can share large photographs. You can embed videos. Now, you can do some of that on Facebook. It's just not as uh, user-friendly or it doesn't, it doesn't paint the picture the same way as you can do it on Google. The problem that Google has is they were late to the dance, I think. Uh, and, they, and, and there's two things. They were kind of late to the dance, and they've got a great product. But they're also the big gorilla. They own the search system. And there's a tremendous amount of hatred towards somebody owning the whole show. <laughs> and so they come out there with, with a, you know, uh, uh, for some reason you can't, you can't beat Google, but some people think they can, or they'll just ban it or whatever. So, I mean, uh, you know, there, there, there are winners. Google's a winner. I like, and, and, and this Google Plus Hangout that, that has come along is phenomenal. There, if you just sit back and let your mind kind of run with that. You can you can develop just like you've developed these platforms where you're interviewing and you've got several different uh, likes that you do and you segment them out. I'm doing one where, where I try to interview people one on one on that and and I participate in several others. But you can get into you know happy seniors whatever you know and you can get four people developing and you can de you know have cross platforms and things like that. It's just phenomenal what what you're able to do. The problem with that is there's a there's a, as we experience tonight. There's a little bit of a learning curve sometimes, not necessarily sometimes, but almost every time you come back, if you're just not fluid with it, you you run into a, a little bit of a glitch, and 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 a lot of people like ease of operation, so they get frustrated. Yeah, there there Google can be glitchy, especially if you're not on the Chrome browser. I That's find right. if you have any other that was what happened before. I forgot the Safari browser was still open. And I didn't check to make sure that there wasn't another browser open. If you're going to do a Google Hangout, this is a note to everybody, make sure there's no other browsers open. Google yeah. Hangouts love the Chrome browser. Yeah. Chrome, it likes the Chrome browser only. If there's yeah. any other browsers open, it gets glitchy and it just gets really quirky. So that is a little tip for people that want to do Google Hangouts. So I and I really do. I love I love Google Hangouts, and I agree with you. It's a lot more user friendly, especially for having beautiful large photos. I think Facebook is really great. I think that Facebook people need to learn what to share and what not to share in terms of rants and putting up stupid photographs that get you into trouble where they think that nobody sees them and they do. Um, I and think that's I think that's the culture we live in. It is. That's that is what's happened with. With what we are, civility's kind of. I think you and I might have exchanged this once before, but civility's <laughs> kind of gone away. And you know, I'm I'm kind of an old school guy. Uh, you know, I I don't mind. I try to steer away from politics. You know, exactly. I try to steer away. I try to steer away from various things that would be temperamental. But it seems that that and and I think I wrote a blog post on this maybe last summer about you know if you if you say something positive you'll get like 20% response rate. You say something negative, you'll get like a 90% response rate. So it just it just fuels somebody somebody's having a bad day and they, you know, they slam XYZ brand over there. And as soon as they do it, I mean, it's just whether they've got a, you know, a dog in the fight or not, everybody just piles on and and I just I just I have a bad taste in my mouth when I see that happening. Now, sometimes XYZ brand needs to be bashed. They've done some bad stuff, but they can, you know, they they get eviscerated before they even get a chance to say, wait a minute, 
<laughs> you know, that was not correct. So they're already slammed, you know, the tweets are out and the posts are out and the, the pirated picture or something like that. And it's just, you, you do have to be on your toes and pay attention to it because it is, it can be a cruel world to individuals as well as brands. Well, that's the funny part. It's kind of like some people think bad publicity is good publicity because they're getting attention. And for me, I don't post anything that's even slightly overtly sexual. I mean, sure. I know someone that actually, you'll laugh at this. I know someone that actually posted a picture of a bathtub with candles. And I said to her, <laughs> what? And she's a female. I said, yeah. what are you doing? Inviting. <laughs> Leaving yourself open for Pandora's box yeah. of comments. So, of course, yeah. what happens? A guy comes onto her page and goes, ooh, la, la. And this, yeah. left, and this left open for our whole Pandora's box of comments. I don't post anything even slightly overtly sexual, nothing religious, and not even jokes, because what I may find funny, someone in Europe may find offensive. So it's like, why even go there? Well, I, 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 will, I, will, I will tell you this, and we, we talk about That's this. That's what you and I talked about in the group. Well, That's where you and I butted heads. We were well, like, oh, I, we, we even had a phone conversation once. We were like, it was so funny. We talk, we talk, we talk about this often, though, and, and this, is how, this is how I treat my, my platforms. I have I have a branded I have a branded page right that right. is my brand I have a uh, I have personal a Twitter, page I have a personal page not my personal page you know I try to give some insight into my personality maybe I'm at the beach maybe I'm visiting maybe I'm doing some food porn or whatever the people <laughs> do but I would never do that I would never do any of that on one of my business pages ever. You know, and I, I just keep that, I, and, I, and and really the only one I do it on is, is on the Facebook per, personal profile page is where I kind of share that. Now, I do see somebody go on there, you know, you're looking at a, a Facebook page and there's a something that might say, you know, that might offend you or you might see it as maybe a little bit off color or something like that. And then they've put it over here, they put it over on this platform and, and they've just broadcast it across the whole spectrum and I, I tend to think that that's how because that's how you get you know that's how you get people jazzed up about it a little bit you know so <laughs> and I love Twitter you know I don't watch the news anymore all you have to do is go on Twitter it'll tell you any news you want to know just go on Twitter you'll find yeah. out when the latest it, bombing happens you'll find out who got elected you'll find out what happened in China Japan Europe all you gotta do is go on Twitter. Anything you wanna know, just type in the hashtag, type on the country, and you'll know anything you wanna know. So I love Twitter for that. Yeah, I, I posted a question in a, in a hangout I was in earlier today to the to the group. I think we were off air at the time, but I asked. I said, "What do y'all think the most powerful platform is out there right now?" And naturally, what do you think everybody says? <laughs> Facebook, of right? Fa Twitter. Facebook, 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 Facebook. And, and you can't you can't argue with the the volume of people that are on Facebook. That's but, true. But you cannot argue with the power that a tweet has. Absolutely. And, and, it's, and, and what Twitter did, Twitter, Twitter revolutioned the news cycle. It took the news reporter and put it in Carly and Randy's hands. Exactly. You know, because I might be standing there just like I saw the other day, the, a backstory on the Boston bombing. You know, uh, exactly. as, soon as, as soon as that bombing happened, there was people tweeting those pictures that the police were using and asking, you know, and it was all it was all done. I mean, a lot of that was solved through through tweets, you know. And you just think about the the incidents around the world. So to me, I, I'm a Twitter fan, and I like that. I like exactly what you just said. Anytime, 24/7, you can get on there. You can find out what's current if something happens. If you if you if you're following the right source, an interest of you, you'll you'll get it if you're you're paying attention to it. Now, how would you say? Now, here's the part I want to tie back into marketing. So, what are three valuable tools or tips that you can give people that how they can wisely and I mean wisely use social media? Now, obviously, you know you'd need to know a company to to actually say, okay, these are the platforms for them to use for their marketing plan and we obviously can't do that because you don't know the company however how can you give them three so we're going to generalize this three wise tools that they can take from social media to apply towards marketing well there that, that I'll, I'll just do this it, it, this would apply to whichever brand that were you were thinking about right okay? and, and and two is to be there to be transparent and to listen 
I mean, ah, you, have, okay. you, have to, you have to be there because, and, and when I say that, and I said this earlier, if you're, um, if you've identified that you, you know, you're selling widgets and you've got a pretty good audience that follows a, a group on Facebook or Twitter or something like that, you're going to have, you're going to have a percentage that are on Facebook, a percentage that's on Twitter. So, so accordingly, spend your time in those channel markets, right? But you got to be there, okay? And when you got to be there, you got to listen and you got to respond. If they, if, if, if they engage with you in any kind negative or positive, then you got to respond because, if you, you know, you got to look at those negatives of opportunities. If you're doing everything right and you get a negative, negative response, that should be food for you to go back and say, how do I improve that? Instead of looking at it like, well, you know, that's just some hothead, you know, if it, if it has credence. So, and at the same time, I said transparency, don't hide anything on there. Don't delete something. Don't ignore something, be there and, and respond to your customer and be open and say, look, um, I'm sorry the plane's hot and it's, you're out stuck on the tarmac. We're trying everything we can to get you back to the terminal. We'll get you off the plane. And when, when we get you there, we're going to give you a, all a free Coke or something like that. Okay, I agree with you on, on transparency 100%. I don't, I don't agree with sweeping things under the carpet. I do have one little caveat that, to that, though. I don't believe in leaving people that are cursing and saying really lewd things on there. I will delete things on my feed where people are just being like literally cursing people out. I don't believe in leaving things on my Facebook feed where people are saying, I mean, like literally, you know, F in this, F in that. That type of thing I do not leave on my feed. Oh, I, I agree do agree with you, with you yeah. though. If it's, if it's just mildly obnoxious, I will leave it. I, I, I agree. With, I, I agree with you, you know, Carter. Yeah, but if you go if you go back to what we were talking about earlier, I mean, there's trolls out there. There's people just oh, hands that are awakened to do that. And and if you you know if you were ha if you were a brand and you were having some problems, there's probably somebody that's gonna go on there and say, oh yeah, you know X Y Z is always doing that. They're the oh yeah, no, I agree with you. And I, I, I and I, 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 agree I agree with that. No, I, I will go. No, I, I have gone on there and said, okay, excuse me, you know, can you please? I, I have. So in other words, I first address it. However, if they still go on and on and on and are still coming out with that, then I will. So my point is I first attempt to address it, and then if they're still going on and going off, then I delete it. So I first yeah. attempt to address it, and then if yeah. they're still going on and being really lewd and, you know, so and it's this, not like I just immediately go and delete it. Yeah, and this is the danger. This is the danger with that. Not not necessarily, but this is something that you need to be aware of with that. Or I know people to be aware. cut and paste. I've seen well, that. Well, too. well, yeah, but what I what I'm saying is Twitter. Twitter has a policy that you know that they, they, they could go on there and f f f f this to Carly all they want, and unless Carly says something, they're really not going to take anything down. Exactly. And and you can you can you can say something, and they'll take it down. The only problem is once it's out there, it's gone. Oh, do you so, know that? Did you know that? Um, you can never delete. Wait, wait. Once something's out, well, Twitter. Well, that's different. You're talking about Twitter. I'm talking about a Facebook. Twitter. You can never delete. What was it? I forget now. Once something's tweeted, it's tweeted forever. That is true. That's, Once something's tweeted, it is there forever, and yeah, you can and, never delete a retweet either. Yeah, and face Facebook. If somebody screen captured it, they can. Get oh it yeah, that's Facebook can take it down. Absolutely, so. I've seen, yeah, I, I've seen but, captures from screens. Oh my God, that would knock your socks off. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, that is absolutely true. I mean, there are ways. I mean, yeah, you can block someone, and that's the other thing too. I don't believe blocking. Let's talk about blocking for a second because this is really important. Do not block someone just to block someone. First, first. now I also believe if you're giving someone feedback, don't do it by an email. Put, go in an email say, Randy, if you're ha I would like to have a phone conversation because I really would like to resolve this. Have a phone conversation. Don't just block somebody. Sure. And, and if you have an issue with someone, first just unfriend them. You don't need to block them. <laughs> Only block them if it's an absolute necessity. Right. You don't know what they're doing behind you. If you block someone, you don't know what they're doing behind That's your right. back. Just unfriend them. However, if I tell someone, if I inbox Randy and I just tell him off in an email, first of all, what if I inbox him in an email, what he reads and I read, 20 people can read the same, e same email and we're all going to get a different, like in our head, we're Absolutely. all going to read something differently. Have yeah. the phone conversation. Okay, like do that first. I, Don't just I, go, Randy. You're an idiot. 
Don't well, this is, this, this is what I think that, that, um, that is so exciting about uh, social media. And, and also, and, we can do this. We can have a Google Hangout and resolve something. That, well, that's true. There's all, but this is what, and this, this goes into that. Social media is taking, it is taking us back to old school marketing. It is one-on-one -on -one conversation. It's a community. It, it is, hey, it, you know, it, it, if I see something and somebody's recommending, you know, a certain tire that I need for my vehicle, well, okay, that's an ad. But if Carly says, hey, I just had to put new tires on my vehicle, and I went over here to so-and-so's, and they treated me like a princess, and I just love their service, they did everything right, and they're fair pricing. That resonates with me because you and I have a relationship. Well, where did that used to happen at? It used to happen in the barber shop. It used to happen in the country store, the diner, the drug store, and things like that. That's what social media is. And people get involved in saying, hey, social media is about relationships. And at the same time, they're saying that they're just flooding, flooding, flooding this stuff like, look at me, look at me. And they don't just sit back sometimes and, and add any value or add supporting uh, 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 information that somebody might curate and say, hey, that's helpful to me. Uh, so that's, you know, and that's why I say it's very exciting because it really is just, it's, it's the throwback, but it's done on a digital space. That's why I love Foursquare. And I'll tell you why. You go to a restaurant, you get bad service, you can write it on Foursquare. You have a wonderful meal, you can write it on Foursquare. I look at Foursquare all the time to find out where's a great restaurant, where's, you know, you can find out all sorts of awesome things from Foursquare. And that's where I, I look all the time to find out where's the best place to eat. And yeah, that, you're right. Yeah. That's, that's why I love social media because you can, sit, like you said, if Randy tells me I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to love it because it's like, Referrals. Referrals are the best. I'd rather know where to go because someone said something. I'm not gonna. And the same thing for hiring people. If I'm gonna hire an intern or hire someone for social media or hire someone to work with me, I'm not gonna go on the yellow. Who uses the yellow pages anymore? When was the last time you used the yellow pages? Well, I don't use. Well, the digital, <laughs> the digital yellow page. I don't know. No, I mean, I, I mean the book. When was no, the last time you actually physically opened the yellow pages? I don't have Honestly. One. I don't, I don't, I can't answer that question because I don't have one. <laughs> I have literally physically not used the yellow. Every time they send them to the house, you know how they put the books and they put them outside? I put them in the recycling bin. <laughs> yeah. I literally picked them up and carried them to the trash can and put them in the recycling bin. Uh, I, I literally have not used one in over 10 years. I keep on carrying them to the trash bin. I don't know what to do with them. I yeah, have not physically used the yellow pages. I'm either on my on my iPhone, you know, asking Siri, or I'm on the computer looking up in Google, and way even beyond that, I don't even do that anymore. I ask a friend, I go online, they go, I type into one of my friends on Facebook or someone, hey, do you know someone who does so and so? Who would you suggest to do this? Who would you refer for this? Who would you refer for that? Because I'd rather someone refer me somebody. I'd rather, you know, I don't want to use a stranger. Sure. I want someone that knows that, hey, this person's good at X, Y, and Z. Right. 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 Absolutely, and I mean, you you know, with an iPhone in your hand, uh, as long as you got a as long as you got a battery or a power source, you really don't need anything else. Exactly. I mean, you know, you can you can ask for directions. You can ask, you know, how far do I have to walk? How far do I have to drive? Um, how to map me out a way? I mean, you know, where's the best hamburger I can eat in this town? And you know, it's it's amazing. And uh, access your bank account, do everything. So it's, it's exactly, great. and that's that's the beautiful thing about technology. I mean, now the scary part that I've said, I said this in various interviews, is that technology has brought us closer together in some ways further apart. We need to start learning that when we're at restaurants and at home, we need to learn to put our cell phones down. Can't be rude. We got to actually engage face to face. You know, our, our cell phones may be our friends, and we also need to learn <laughs> that human beings are our friends. Yeah, that uh, I think Pandora's out of the box. Exactly. <laughs> So Randy, we are like literally out of time here. So I would love for you, what is something that you just absolutely would love to tell the audience? Like last tips or just last golden nuggets or just anything you just love, last thing you'd love to share. Well, okay, I, I, this is what I would say. Um, um, just what we were just talking about, embrace the, embrace the digital world that's happening because um, what's happening today it's gonna it's gonna multiply by next week and 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 
three times that by the next week after. There's so many good things coming out there that that are making our lives so much more easy um, to to get along with. I just got a father who's 84 years old on Facebook. It took me about two years of saying, Dad, you just probably need to sit down and do this. And he's just become immersed in discovering a whole, I mean, it's almost like a gleam in his eye because he's just discovering all this stuff new and like a kid that's, you know, it's just occupied. There's, and, and, and back to what you said, there's a good and there's a bad, but the good really outweighs the bad. And, it, and it's going forward. So embrace it, get in, short, get, get in front of it, learn some of these, these avenues. Uh, if there's somebody out there that hasn't gotten on Facebook, you might find somebody that, and I do this all the time, somebody you haven't seen in 20 years, you can just, you can reach out and touch them and all of a sudden catch up and, and, and probably bring a tear to your eye. So uh, take advantage of it. Well, that's awesome, though. That's the one thing I, I do value for social media and the Internet. For someone that's homebound or like your father who's 84 and they have nothing else to do, I mean, seriously, so what if they're on the Internet for, you know, how many hours right. a day? Sure. If it gives sure. them some sort of satisfaction and joy, so what? Let him sure. be. I mean, seriously. I mean, what else is, you know, if they're on TV all day long or, you know, they're sitting in a chair all day long or they're napping all day long at that age, if he's getting some joy out of just surfing the Internet and engaging with people and looking at pretty pictures and positive picture quotes, oh, my God, God bless them. You know sure. what I mean? If it's yeah, giving there's, there's, some it's sort world. of joy, oh, my God, that is like so beautiful. And, I, and that's one thing I do have to say that I absolutely love the Internet for. For the people that are disabled and homebound, the Internet has been, the internet has been such a glorious way for them to be able to reach out to other human beings. So for that, I am so grateful for the internet, where they actually yeah. get to talk and you know email and engage and just not be, you know, they may be in their hospital bed and they, you know, someone's actually put a laptop or built some sort of system so they can actually, you know, type and and talk don't even, to other people. Don't even beings. don't even have to type anymore. I mean, you know, they got programs yeah, that can talk to it. So, so you know that it, it is there. There's just so much. There's so much technology that makes. Uh, you know, uh, handicaps or something like that just fade away. It puts us all in the same Oh, same my God. Spot. It really is. I mean, I, as everyone knows the story, I did my radio interview from my, I, from my hospital bed. I jumped. Oh, I didn't jump. Well, I got in my wheelchair and wheeled myself to the courtyard to do an interview. So, I mean, you know, it, it really is amazing. I mean, it's just been a joy. Like, for me, I mean, I, I if I didn't have the internet and the Google Hangouts, I don't know what I would do right now. So, I mean, it is an absolute blessing. And I thank you so much for joining me. It's been so much fun having you. And, and you. Um, I you. wish you were I wish you were in our group again. I miss you. I miss I miss having our <laughs> our I miss having our banter about marketing versus social media. So hang well, out no, I'll come, come back every now come hang out every now and again. Just pop in sure. once in a while. Okay, Carly. Thank you for having right. me. So um anyways um I'm going to leave everyone for tonight. You have been with Randy Bowden, and you can reach him at bowdentobowden.com, and you can reach me at carlyalissathorn.com. And as usual, I'll be creating a page which will have the embedded podcast and the embedded video. And as you all know, I absolutely love feedback, so be sure to leave some. And if there's any other topics that you'd like to hear back, hear about, excuse me, please let us know that as well. So it's been a joy to be with you tonight. So for tonight, I do leave you. And I look forward to hanging out with you guys again. Have a wonderful night, everyone.